We will increase capacity at the IMH and the redeveloped Alexandra Hospital for those that need specialist care. Capacity at long-term care facilities will also be increased to provide step-down care for those who need it. We will increase the number of public sector psychiatrists and psychologists by about 30% and 40% respectively. We will introduce mental health services to all polyclinics and 900 more GP clinics. We will equip and train an additional 28,000 frontline personnel and volunteers. They serve across our community and social service touch points so they can identify people struggling with mental health and offer early assistance. Uh, we will also redouble our existing efforts. MOE is on track to achieving its target of deploying more than 1,000 teacher counsellors across our schools. And this is on top of the basic counselling skills that all teachers will be trained in, as well as the one to two counsellors that every school will have to support students with more challenging social and emotional needs. We will provide parents with resources to support their children's mental health and well-being needs. We will establish more peer support networks in the community, including in schools, institutions of higher learning, workplaces, and amongst our national servicemen. These networks will have trained peer leaders who can spread the message on the importance of mental health and provide a first line of response to their friends or colleagues who need help. These are significant moves. They will require more coordinated efforts across the government, more training, more people, and ultimately more government spending. But we will set aside the resources to advance this important agenda. Uh, through these moves, we aim to reduce waiting times and make mental health services more accessible and closer to where individuals are, be it at homes, schools or workplaces. We aim to keep mental health services affordable and we will do so through our national healthcare financing framework of government subsidies and the three M's, which will cover all cost-effective mental health treatments. Importantly, no one in Singapore will be denied access to appropriate care because of inability to pay. Several members also spoke about private insurance coverage outside of healthcare, including in areas like life insurance. Life insurers in Singapore have in fact offered coverage to persons with mental health conditions. But the underwriting of such persons can be a complex matter as our, as our own data is limited and insurers here typically reference the underwriting guidelines of global life reinsurers. So we will study and review how this coverage can be improved and ensure that financial institutions deal fairly with all their customers, including those with mental health conditions.